Last time we thought we, we were uh, talking about the relationship between uh, the regulators and, and the financial industry. I, I gave a few examples first of my uh, own experience. Then we started about the um, relationship uh, between regulator and regulated around a few examples. Um, the spring of 2008, excuse me, 2009, when there was a clash at the um, American Congress uh, between a committee, the financial committee, and the member of the Financial um, Accounting um, Standards Board. I talked about also the, about the, the cause for the, um, uh, for the subprime, um, for the subprime crisis when a, a one particular American state, North Carolina, had actually introduced legislation that would have prevented uh, the, um, the crisis from developing. But the industry, through very heavy uh, lobbying, had uh, prevented other states to adopt uh, this particular type of legislation. I mentioned high frequency uh, trading and opacity. Why is, op uh, why is um, uh, opacity uh, allowed? And in that respect, I mentioned that Using um, the opacity provided by high frequency uh, tra trading, typically 2,000 op transactions being per operation in any case, being able to be processed within one, one second, uh, that obviously there had been some use of that in, in, in terms of trying to lift, uh, to lift the, the markets. And I, I explained that um, it's only through a, a firm that uh, a, a corp an American corporation called Nanex, which decided to collect uh, all information, even all these 2,000 operations by, by second, uh, and, and, and displaying it, I mean, uh, what, releasing the information related to that, that we could see that there's probably some manipulation. Um, when people sell and buy individuals, human beings, um, you've seen what, what kind of curves develop from these operations. It looks like very much what is called a random walk, or in terms of physics, it's called a Brownian motion. Um, when machines can operate very, very quickly, it looks very differently. And I'm circulating a, um, a sheet that you will see being passed of what it looks when we, uh, when Nanix went into the operations within a couple of, of seconds. You you must look at this and thinking that maybe the whole the, the, the whole sheet is only one one second of operation, and you will see that this doesn't look at all like human beings doing doing something. Uh, it's totally regular. It's uh, an example. This ex it's only only one example. I could, they they show like like 20 or different uh, different type of patterns, which are definitely strategies in order to either make the price drop deliberately or um, or make it rise. I just give you one example for you to be able to to illustrate that. Um, when when a price is created on a market like like a stock market or a um, a um, futures market. You can change a price by selling I don't know 200,000 shares at one particular new new uh, new uh, price. And uh, you can do that. You can sell them if there's somebody just to buy them. So the price may change because there are 200,000 um, uh, operations being taking place. But you can also change the, the price just with one, one share being exchanged. You can propose to buy one share or sell one share, one tick up. One tick is just the elementary unit of, of price on a market, and you can make it go up or down in, the, in exact the same man manner as if you were using a, a huge volume. So one strategy that tra traders done, you know, uh, explained uh, at the time people were, it was human beings doing it, is for instance, let's say you, you want to, uh, to sell uh, 200,000, but you're not happy with the current price, so will, you will actually buy one share at the time, trying to make it go up by one, one tick. And you will say, you will make a decision like, for instance, saying, I will devote 200 of the contracts just trying to go up by one tick. And then when I reach the price I will have managed to reach that way, I will sell 200,000 and making the difference between the current price and, and the new price. And this is typically what you see there being done. I mean, the computers were actually asked to do exactly the same thing as, as traders would be uh, doing by, by hand. Last time I gave also a few examples the, the, uh, uh, about the um, re relationship between regulators and, uh, and um, 
regulated financial industry in, in what is called uh, capture, uh, regulator capture, where obviously the, um, how would I say, the regulated has managed to have the regulator do exactly what they want and being uh, rewarded later on by a very good job in, 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 in the industry. I had left that uh, quite open as knowing that some of the uh, members of the panel would want to uh, discuss that in, in, in particular. I, had, I mentioned as a conclusion a suggestion which had been made by Governor Le, Le, Le Kuhn, uh, about how to deal with that possibility of, of uh, regulator capture, how to prevent it. One possibility would be, of course, to try to give these civil servants who are regulators the same kind of, of um, a fee, a compensation, remuneration, which is in the um, financial industry, which would be a self-defeating uh, attempt because all the uh, other uh, umptonize, other uh, civil servants would then want to uh, get the same kind of reward as, as those which are regulating the financial industry, so it would be a self-defeating job. Uh, what he suggested, that there would be caps on, on the uh, um, amount of money that people can receive as, as remuneration in terms of salaries, or wages, or, or bonuses in the financial industry, which is obviously the, uh, the, the way to, to go. The subject of, of today um, was, was labeled um, tax, tax havens, um, tax havens, uh, mafias and uh, and uh, uh, shadow shadow banking um the way I'm going to uh, address the issue is in, is in the, the following way. I, I will first try to set up the, the framework by, by wondering what, what do we achieve by having a fiscal system altogether, by, the, by having a system of taxation uh, with, with, within countries. Because this is the, uh, once we've kind of got a view about that, it will become much more clear to understand what are the um, why the tax havens may, may, may appear, uh, why mafias may exist in, 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 in the background, and w how did the, uh, the sh what we call the shadow banking sector uh, develop. When you th think of, of, of fiscality, of, of paying tax, I, I will make a difference between individuals and, uh, and corporations, uh, co co companies, firms. Um, why, why does a why does a um, why does a state um, have has a, a taxation system? Well, in order to connect collect money uh, for uh, the state to be able to pay for its uh, uh, the, the costs of its uh, op operations. What, what, do, what does it do? It provides, the state provides an, a number of, of services um, and among, for instance, a, a certain amount of the redistribution of, of wealth. Uh, it provides um, other services like, 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 like uh, maintaining an army for the protection of the, of the borders, um, an, a, a justice system which is made out of, of diff different parts, like, like police in order to maintain order and to uh, be able to uh, arrest uh, culprits of different types of um, breaches of, of the law. Um, tribunals and uh, then a jail system uh, to put the people, uh, uh, what would I say, uh, first let's say a, um, a fee a fee system and then a uh, prison system um, uh, in order to keep the people, which the, system, uh, the ju judicial system decides, uh, has have to be put away for some extent of time, either for reform or just to get them out of the way uh, for an, an, an a sufficient amount of, of, of time. These services need, need to, to be paid. When you think of an individuals, um, an, an, a number of ways that individuals are, are taxed in, in a different uh, uh, number of ways. For instance, if you have property, uh, you will be uh, pay a, a tax on your property uh, and, and every, on a yearly basis. Uh, you will pay for the collection of, of garbage through uh, your uh, municipality. You will be taxed on, on labor. Uh, you will tax on capital gains. And there will be typically, um, in, in, our, in our countries at least, um, AVT, added value uh, taxation on the, on the, at the level of con con consumption. Um, the, 
to, to, to the amount that um, the taxation systems operates a certain amount of redistribution of, of, of wealth, uh, some people will benefit more from that redistribution than, 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 than others. Typically, the people at the top will not benefit from it, and the people at the bottom will benefit from a certain amount of uh, redistribution. That will lead automatically to the fact that there will be some kind of unease among the people who do not benefit from the system uh, in paying their taxes. They will say, well, I, I essentially pay for others, and you will see that all over the papers. There's no, there you can open your daily paper where some people will complain that they're paying, if they pay taxes, they it will benefit other people and, and not uh, themselves. And of course, the people at the bottom will uh, benefit and they will not complain of the system. And typically, they, they, you will have the, the following, which is the people you know, regard themselves as, as not being the beneficiaries of the system of redistribution, will try to avoid the, the system altogether. All and there are different ways to do that. Uh, we talk about tax evasion, but we talk also, in, I would say, in milder terms of tax tax optimization, which means that you find ways to uh, pay uh, a minimum of, of tax. Now, the fact is that uh, opt if optimization is possible at all, and, and I, I already uh, quoted at some point the, uh, a remark made by Mervyn King, who was actually the, at the head of the Bank of England when he was asked what is the, dif dif the difference between tax evasion and tax uh, optimization. He said the, the, the thickness of a, of a prison wall, uh, meaning that it's quite arbitrary, uh, the distinction between the two. But the fact is that among the leading classes, the elites, there is how would I say, some definite le leniency towards uh, tax optimization in any case, if not uh, um, in favor of uh, tax evasion or, or, or fraud altogether. And I'd given a, an example previously of Monsieur Eric Worth, who was Minister of the Budget in, in France and whose uh, wife was, uh, uh, whose job that he had obtained through his uh, connections was that she would be a, a specialist of tax optimization on one of the most important uh, um, uh, air of a, um, of a um, industrial empire in France, of uh, the, Madame Betancourt, the heir of the, uh, the L'Oréal uh, cosmetic um, em empire. So there is there is a uh, there is a, a, a certain amount of, of, of tolerance among the, 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 the leaders of our, our countries to this uh, uh, to this type of, of practice, but essentially for the reason that uh, the higher up you are in the uh, economic hierarchy, the, the less you benefit actually from any amount of, of redistribution. And some peop sometimes people are quite quite outspoken. Uh, to take a recent example from France, uh, and this was still. Under Mr. Sarkozy, but before the, 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 the socialist government, there was a, a discussion about an exceptional tax on, on the rich because of the uh, dif difficulty with the sovereign debt of, of France. And um, there, there were a number of, uh, how would I say, uh, articles, how would I say, um, proclamation statements in, in, in the papers from, from people who said, who had, I mean, were in a position to pay an extra tax to say, yes, well, this is a nice thing we to do. And, uh, and, and until one of them said, well, maybe we should make that recurrent. And uh, in that case, that there was an outcry. There was a say, well, no, no, we're prepared to make, we, we, we're prepared to make a, 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 a present to the country once, but not, 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 not more than, more than, than that. Um, what, what are the tools of that uh, of, of, of um, tax tax optimization um, in, in, in Anglo-Saxon uh, law? There is a particularly useful trick in that respect, which is called a trust. And I'm not going to go into um, that. Would be really a, 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 a law course in, in the definition of trust and how it operates. But in, in, in a few words, a trust allows you in, in, in to actually put your, your the, the money you have in, into a, a kind of. And what I say, 
assign it to a f fictional person who will actually decide um, how that money would be allocated. The, the trick, of course, is that you can be both the person who creates a trust and then the person who is a beneficiary uh, of the trust. And it's particularly easy to do if you do it through some, um, through some other, other country, uh, typically to what is called a, a, a tax, tax haven. Um, tax havens are situated in a, a number of, I was, I was about to say in separate countries, like, like the Cayman Highlands, the bah Bahamas, uh, typically. Uh, but the fact is that uh, countries have actually managed most of them uh, to create tax havens within very much their own jur jurisdiction. Uh, like between France and, and uh, Spain, there is Andorra. Uh, Luxembourg is very much playing the role of a, a, a tax haven. Um, Belgium, to some extent, is also Holland. Um, Britain has got uh, Jersey, Guernsey, and the Isle of Man. Within the, within the organization of the American uh, states, the state of Delaware operates very much like a tax haven and, and so on, uh, suggesting that there, there is no actual very definite will uh, to eliminate them. And I will go later on in, in, into why uh, there is no actual will to uh, have them uh, d d disappear. Um, until until recently, the, I would say that um, that way of looking at things by by, by people who are the wealthiest in, in in a state saying, well, we do not we don't do not benefit from redistribution, so there's some justification for us to try to es escape that system. That has that that's true to, to a large extent in terms of, of in, in times of plenty when when things work very well. What we've seen uh, at, since, since the beginning of, of the crisis, um, what has, has been called bailouts of the financial industry, is the uh, intervention of states in order to save the, um, to save the, the, the banking system uh, in, its in its different parts, not, not all of them being impacted in the exact same way. At that point, the fiction that the wealthiest people do not benefit from uh, redistribution is actually uh, disconfirmed by events, because by maintaining uh, the, system, the banking system intact, it is essentially the wealthiest people who have been protected, and because because the tax system impacts essentially the people who are at the bottom of the um, um, economic structure they have been paying uh, for most of the, of the money. I, I called it earlier in, in the previous, this, um, uh, uh, I got a Dutch term, lazing, a uh, previous, uh, previous lecture. Um, we, 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 we talked about, about that in, in one particular op aspect, and I call that a call option, uh, using uh, some terms from the uh, financial literature, where you can actually be insured against, you can actually get all the gains which are attached to something, but you will uh, not be um, impacted by, by the losses. And, and uh, some uh, editorialists called that, uh, some, some years ago before the crisis, called that the uh, privatization of gains and socialization of, of losses. Uh, in terms of, of, uh, of inc um, income tax, um, there are two, two, two aspects. One is, is, is work itself, the labor that's been input, which is taxed in one particular way, and, um, and income through um, gains on, on capital, which is, uh, uh, which is being impacted in, in a different way. The whole tradition in the 19th century would be that uh, in income gains on capital will be much more heavily uh, taxed than, uh, than a, uh, those on, 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 on labor. And that was very much, I would say, uh, in line with the, the, t with the um, feeling of the time when there was a very much element of antagonism within societies, where there was some revolutionary claims that uh, gains on capital were uh, spoliation altogether. All um, I, I mentioned earlier that this idea was introduced by David Ricardo in this uh, analysis of, of the economy and was take, uh, taken over in the same exact terms uh, by Karl Marx, that uh, value is being uh, created by, by, by work and that for that reason any uh, 
I mean, typically uh, labor work should not be taxed at all, and but, but and that um, uh, gains on capital should be heavily taxed because they actually derive from a spoliation. In, in French, you say uh, gain sans cause, and unjustified uh, gain of capital would be technically regarded as an unjustified unjustified gain, and that would explain why it would be more heavily taxed than. Uh, than, um, than on labor in order to actually discourage, uh, discourage this type of, uh, of, uh, of, type of, of gain. Uh, in the 20th century, the, probably sim just simply the, um, the uh, power balance has, has meant that more and more um, labor has become more heavily taxed than, 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 than capital. And this is in particular, uh, uh, particular the case in, in Belgium, which justified it, that statement by Monsieur Bernard Arnault at some point in France when he were to, was told that there was a change in the law in France in that respect that he would simply move to, um, to Uccle here in the Brussels uh, in order to, um, to benefit from the uh, more lenient approach to um, uh, to gains on capital in, in Belgium than it is in the case in, in, in France. I, I, I do not know the story, and there's something would to be worth uh, in investigating how historically it, 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 we had that reversal from uh, heavier uh, taxation of uh, gains on capital, which was typical of the 19th century, uh, to uh, a reversal of the situation. I'd be interested to see what were the justification in the, uh, for, the, for the change of, of, of laws in, in, in that respect, because um, it, it, at first glance, it would, it would seem difficult to difficult to, to justify. Um, I've mentioned um, I've mentioned individuals, uh, corporations are also uh, also have to uh, pay pay tax. Um, small corporations are very much in, in typically in the same situation as uh, as individuals, and the lower they are in the economical um, ranking uh, in the hierarchy in the hit parade, uh, the more typically they would be, um, you know, be submitted to the same kind of uh, approaches as, um, as an individuals. But the higher up they are in terms of economic power, the more they can actually escape the, the um, national law in, in that respect, in that different ways uh, for them to, um, to do that. Uh, one is to distribute the company uh, un, un, uh, under a number of, uh, of uh, uh, corporations, which are linked by uh, one being, a, let's say, financial holding, the other one being subsidiaries, and so on, which allows you to redistribute a, uh, a company over a number of, of countries, and possibly making it uh, for you really to pay tax essentially in 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 one in, in the one of those countries where you have to to pay the least tax. Uh, currently, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google. Um, Apple being being real culprits in that in that respect of paying very little, Amazon paying very little tax by uh, by uh, having uh, spread themselves over an, a number of countries, and there are there's a um, that's also something I would really like to find out how it ever developed, um, which was called uh, uh, transfer prices, which in the uh, which allows a company that's been spread out in, 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 in fiscally in that respect to actually uh, put in his, his books for the accounting purposes the, the price of items which are being being used, like like resources, like like the things that are stationary within the company and so on, to actually decide in what country they would uh, they would actually uh, have that being being calculated, and they may inflate or deflate uh, playing on, on local local taxation system uh, in order to put uh, things in in best possible best possible terms how had, how has that uh, been been able essentially because uh, as I mentioned uh, last time or the time before, uh, these companies have, tr have tried to benefit to uh, put themselves in, in the wake, uh, you know, uh, locating themselves within that, that international law which was first de developed as being maritime law and um, being able therefore to, how would I say, de define, define the whole system uh, in, in their own, own terms. For instance, by uh, in introducing, uh, trying to escape national law by, by in, in introducing a private arbitration system and being even able to impose within national law to turn to uh, arbitration. This is very typical when you are 
uh, when you sign a contract in, in the United States for, for whatever, that you, you uh, actually sign a contract which says that you, you will not, if there's any um, litigation, uh, you will agree not to go through the national system of law, but you will turn to some arbitration uh, uh, system. I, I cannot understand how our country can actually allow that, uh, that, uh, that its own justice system is being disconnected uh, for um, some type of operation. That's something that I would also be interested to go into to how, how that how that developed, that parallel uh, justice system uh, being, being introduced. A, a word about, a word about mafias. Um, one, one, of, one of the, I, men I mentioned that one of the things that you, you get in return for paying taxes is that there's a, um, there's a justice system within, within country, the country. And in particular, one, one of the things which is being protected by the justice system is the, your property rights. You, are, and you can call the police if you've been burglarized. You can call the police if something has been damaged from you. And there will be a statement and the police will move in, will kick in, trying to uh, repair. Uh, what happened? Find a culprit, then put that the culprit will be taken to justice, and will be there will be a decision about what needs to to be done. If the state is not very powerful, uh, individuals may move in in order to provide a, a personal um, system of protection of, of property, and that's typically how mafias de de develop. They they come up. As, as you know, and they will say, we, 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 will, we will protect uh, your property against damage if, if you pay a fee to us to protect you. And usually, if you've seen that in, in movies or read in, in novels, they will destroy your property first to convince you that there's a real risk of you uh, being, uh, your property being, uh, being, being damaged. This is a, um, a recurrent theme of some uh, famous uh, um, um, American movies and, 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 and others. So typically, a, a, ma a mafia system will appear when, there's, when, when the state is not in a position, posi posi position really to, to uh, what I say, to deliver the goods, to, to, to actually protect uh, uh, people uh, in the way that it should. And, and of course, this, if, if, you, if a state is in that uh, position, it's very difficult to, to, to re recover from that because it, 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 will, it is by itself a symptom that the, the, the power at the, the state level is in, insufficient and that therefore um, it would be very difficult for the state to try to uh, re recover from that position. A very good example since a few uh, years is the, um, is the situation in, in, in Mexico, for instance. You know that Mexico, the, 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 there's a very powerful, um, very powerful um, drug uh, drug uh, traffic in, in Mexico due to the, to the very heavy, heavy demand in the United States and uh, most of the drug coming from either uh, lower in, in South, South America or uh, use, using uh, the, uh, some, some of the Central um, American states as a way to, for, for, for getting in the, in, in, in the, in the system. Um, and in that case, you have, you know, like private. Or, I mean, you may have seen it. That there was a, uh, a, a little news uh, that a um, a, uh, a beauty queen has recently been been uh, been uh, uh, murdered, and she was a, a, a star from the television in, in in Mexico, and she was actually killed by 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 police because she happened to be the girlfriend of a very powerful um, a drug drug dealer. Why why? Why does these um, these mafia systems de develop? In addition to that, I just hinted to that about mention, man mentioning drug drugs. There is in our, there in our societies a, a number of uh, activities towards which uh, towards which towards which. Uh, our systems, our moral and judicial system are ambiguous. It seems that we don't have a very clear position on them or that we have conflicting value systems which produce different approaches and that therefore there's a kind of zone of ambiguity and of ambivalence uh, from the, and on the side of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the citizens. And that allows 
how would I say, the, the state not to act as powerfully or inconsistently uh, towards the, the issue and, and, uh, pro and through these cracks some alternative system may, uh, may, may appear. I mentioned drug dealing. Uh, we know from, how would I say, historical, ethnological, sociological observation that human beings are susceptible to drug addiction and um, some of the primatologists who have studied uh, um, great apes have seen that when they have the opportunity to um, uh, using some particular uh, fruit or root or whatever they find in their environment, um, apes are also susceptible to uh, turn to uh, addiction. Um, we have an ambivalent uh, attitude to that. We regard people who are ad ad addicted as victims to, in some way, but also of culprits of, of, bre of breaching the law. And therefore, our attitude is probably not very consistent and we produce ambiguities, ambivalences where uh, alternative systems may, may, may come in. Uh, a good example also that well known from novels and, and the cinema is the uh, prohibition of alcohol in the United States before the, the war. Uh, when an addiction is too uh, much part of, I would say, of, the, of, of regular people in, in, in the population, pro prohibiting it is, is, a is a recipe for disaster, as was the case with the prohibition of, of alcohol uh, altogether. In, um, in, the, in, in the United States. There, is, there are talks in, in France currently of trying to prohibit prostitution. Prostitution is another of these very domains where we are ambivalent. We know it's very well present. We know it's morally, how would I say, can be discussed on the moral, according to moral principles. We know that it would be safer to regulate it, but regulating it would be to some extent endorsing it, and therefore we have very fluctuating and ambivalent um, attitudes to, to that, and that's one more reason why we in, in involuntarily and in unwillingly allow a, a parallel systems like, 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 uh, like mafias to uh, move in and, and deal with that. A, a final one is the, um, is the, the uh, the commerce of, of weapons. Uh, commerce of weapons can be illegal. It becomes very, it's very much linked to policies from states, whether to allow it or not, and to allow it, how would I say, on the surface or under the surface in, in different ways. Another thing is that often in uh, international commerce, like typically that of, of weapons, there are, there's a habit in many countries to have kickbacks being uh, uh, delivered for the uh, for these huge contracts association to um, to uh, weapons, and um, as states who turn to that will not want to make it official because this is pr prohibited at the official level. They will try to find some alternative way ways of doing it by essentially using mafias. It's been seen uh, as the way to have the money for kickbacks being transmitted or to use tax havens uh, for that very, uh, very purpose. Um, so the, the question, therefore, of why these tax havens and these mafias are actually being tolerated. There are different reasons for, 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 for why. One I mentioned is that to some extent there is some identification to um, tax evasion from the people who are at the top of, of societies. They understand why they um, why this would be the case, in the same way as Mary, Monsieur Eric Wurst understood very well why his wife would be in that particular business and actually didn't see anything wrong to it. Um, there is also, as I said, the, the need for secret operations which cannot be uh, appear, let's say, within the proper working of society and therefore has to uh, work in, in that way. Typically, politic, uh, financing of political campaigns. There, is, there are cases which are being discussed recently. Um, in the case of Monsieur Sarkozy, <coughs> who has been, uh, his name has been mentioned uh, in, in that respect quite often while he was president, and he's been uh, asked, I think it was last week, to come and testify about, about that. Um, 
opaque uh, financing of political campaigns cannot be done within the system and therefore uh, it is attempting to use the alternatives like, like tax havens and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and mafias. Uh, sometimes diplomacy also uh, uses these, these uh, systems. It is uh, well known that in the case of um, uh, the American government um, about uh, hostages were, that were taken in Iran, uh, the, the official position was that one of firmness and that say that there would not be any discussion. But in the um, background, some money was actually being paid uh, to the uh, people who had taken the hostages. But for obvious reasons, it couldn't be uh, appear on, at the surface of things and had to be, in that case, it, had, it, had, it, it was done through a, um, a clearing house, uh, through some anonymous accounts and the money was uh, being, uh, being <coughs> transferred. Is it possible to stop these practices? Yes, it, it, it is. I mean, the means to do that are uh, very uh, easy, easy to use. Um, it is through these, these clearing houses that I just mentioned, which uh, were uh, through which all the clearing, meaning the compensation of different amounts of money being circulating, uh, is operating. These are in a strategic uh, position in order to uh, make these transfers between different countries uh, operate or not. When there was a ban uh, suggested by the United States to do some any commerce with Iran, this is the way that was, uh, that was done. Uh, the, the clearing houses were told that no operations could be done in either direction uh, with Iran. So the exact same measure could be uh, used in order to uh, put these uh, tax havens out of um, out of out of business, the reason the reasons why it is not done, done I, I just mentioned. Uh, often people said, well, it's extremely difficult to do it. But as I gave the example of Iran in the in in, 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 in the example I, I gave, why would it be possible for political purposes for Iran and impossible for fiscal purposes for it with the uh, with the, uh, the the tax havens? The reason I, I gave is that. Some people benefit from the existence of uh, these um, tax havens. Com the corporations definitely uh, do. Governments also for the operation that, that they want, don't want uh, to make in a very uh, official manner. And that's therefore uh, to, uh, the, the, the reason why it, it, it works that, 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 that way. Um, there's been in 2009 uh, declarations at the level of uh, G, G20 and, and G8 saying that uh, they would, there would be an outlaw, outlawing of the, um, of the uh, fiscal paradises of the, the, the tax havens. Um, and then rapidly after that, the, the, issue, the, the public was told that the issue had been, had been solved uh, what was said, uh, what was the explanation, the issue was, was solved. Uh, ag agreements were made between, uh, between uh, different governments that if there was a request to, uh, to, for information about a particular ac account, um, they, these, um, these uh, states uh, uh, agreed that the information would be provided. But this is, of course, um, in, in a kind of passive position, they would have to be told to, to be requested to give information about a particular, I, I, I have to stop because there's too much talking there right in, in front of, of me just for the time being uh, and no awareness of it. Okay, thank you. Um, the. Um, of course, there's a difference between a, a being in a passive position where you're waiting that somebody asks you um, uh, um, questions about one particular account, uh, which of course is very nice that you would do, from providing the information on, 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 on your, yourself on, on your own behalf. Why? Essentially because the, um, uh, the, the, the people who do the investigations are usually not in a position to have sufficient resources uh, to uh, make investigations on, uh, on a lot of uh, different cases. There's 
in, there's a particular book, I, I, I forget how, oh, it's called, yes, no, I, for, I didn't forget how it's called. It's, called, it's a book called Perfectly Legal. Perfectly Legal is a, a book about how the, the American system works in, in that respect. And it shows in particular in one instance where a, a list of thousands of people who had been uh, uh, fraudulently evading tax in the United States, um, that a list of thousands of people was, was provided to the uh, administration, but because of lack of resources, it ended up that only uh, only 200 people or something like that were actually contacted about the issue, and 20 were actually asked to uh, make some payments for lack of resources simply to deal with these 5,000 uh, names that had been uh, provided. So these are the limitations which are linked to uh, simply uh, communication of, um, of uh, inf information. If we think of one particular a country which has been, uh, how would I say, very much in, under the spotlight in that respect. If we think of, of, of Switzerland, uh, it's interesting how things have been developing in recent, recent years. If we go back, we go back uh, a few years back, uh, like um, I would say typically, when, when was that? Really, I think it was in the 1990s, probably the mid-1990s, that a lot of information came from how uh, Switzerland had operated, I would say, in, in cooperation or in collaboration with the, um, with the Nazi regime in, uh, in, uh, um, in, in Germany during the, uh, the years 1934 to 1945. And that created a, a big shock in, in, in the population. Um, I remember discussion I had at, 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 at that time between uh, with, with, with uh, Swiss citizens who first were in a state of denial and then had to admit uh, that the, the facts that had come up were actually uh, a, a true. And uh, in, in recent years, we, uh, Switzerland has moved from uh, being in a, in a passive uh, position of uh, saying, well, if you, to, saying to other states, if you ask any information, uh, we will actually start providing it to a, a much more proactive uh, a position. Of course, in, in, the, in the current context, Switzerland is trying to get agreements and, and with most countries pre, pre, precisely in saying that if any investigation is, is uh, taking place, we will provide the, uh, provide the, um, um, the information. Um, trying to prevent to some extent that some more, I would say, forceful um, approach would be that they would be actually volunteering uh, evidence. The United States currently is very much putting pressure on them that they would, um, that they would volunteer information rather than passively accept to, uh, accept to uh, pro provide, provide some. If we turn now to uh, if we turn now to um, to shadow banking, um, it it is interesting to to look at that issue because it provides some very interesting illustration of something that I've already said a, a, a number of times that it's not so much in ca in a case like shadow banking that there is some definite uh, will to breach the law, to turn the law, or do things of that nature, but more that the difficulties are more linked to the very poor understanding we have of economic uh, uh, mechanism, and that it is very much, you, you would see, I, I, will, I will probably have to um, come back to some aspect of these issues when we'll talk about uh, the talk about Lord Adair's uh, Turner, Adair Turner uh, reflection on socially useful uh, activities, um, that most difficulties linked to the shadow banking system are due to, to um, incorrect representation of, of economic and financial mechanism. Talking of war, I didn't talk of war, but uh, there is something, something happening. The um, so I, I've been looking at a number of, of documents which have been released recently about the um, the F by the uh, FSA in particular, the Financial uh, Services Authority in the um, uh, in in Britain, also by the IFF, Interna International Financial. Uh, IFF? 
banks, no, okay? Anyway, which is a kind of trade union, I would say, of the big big banks that have also circulated um, circulated documents about uh, the, the shadow banking system. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about it before going into the detail what, what, what it is uh, actually the that shadow banking. It is a little less regulated part of the uh, financial system. Um, it, it falls uh, to some extent uh, un, um, in the cracks of the existing uh, r regulatory uh, system. But if you look at all of these documents, and, 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 and some are actually part of the reader of, of, of uh, lecture n number six, you will see that that's something that's really striking when, when you look at it and not being part of the business, is that the description of the shadow banking uh, system is that doesn't mention speculation at all. For the lay public, the specialty of that sector, as opposed to the others, is, it, it, is that it is doing speculation of, of, of the markets. If you look at the definitions given in these reports, the, the word usually uh, does not appear at all. It tells you that uh, that the um, that the um, uh, shadow banking system is concerned with intermediation and it is, is concerned with the uh, transformation of maturities on, on, on debt instruments. This all sounds, I would say, pretty, uh, uh, how would I say, remarkable and, 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 and laudable. Uh, but that's not exactly what, what, what it is doing. And the explanation for why the description is incorrect is due to, not to malice, it's not deliberately that they're hiding uh, to the fact that speculation uh, is, being, uh, is the main part of that industry. It's because in the representation of the system, speculation is something which is um, Innocent, minor, doesn't have much impact, and if, it's had, if it has any impact, it's actually more positive than, uh, than, than, than negative. And um, I, I've, um, I'm, I'm using here, uh, it, it turns out that I would say um, among the people who are most critical of the, of the, of the financial system uh, currently, there is precisely this uh, Lord Adair Turner uh, at the head of, of the Financial Securities, uh, um, Financial Services Authority in, in, the, um, in, in, in Britain. And, and what is quite amusing is that, how would I say, unwittingly a bit, uh, he, he, he has a extremely, uh, extremely, um, how would I say, Cruel view of of, of the, the the whole the whole industry. Um, he doesn't say that the whole economic uh, framework in in the um, background is is um, is incorrect. He says it's oversimplified. But when you read him, you see that what he means by oversimplified it simply means that it's totally wrong and that it doesn't work all all, all together. I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading here. Uh, is a description of what is the actual context. And then and this is what he, he says. It's in a paper called Economies, Conventional Wisdom and Public Policy. And it was given at the, um, at the Institute for New Economic Thinking in uh, Cambridge in April 2010. Um, Interestingly, you may you may know that uh, Institute for New Economic Thinking was was created with uh, was funded by George uh, Soros. George Soros is a famous a famous personality in the uh, financial world. He is a, he, ha, he is a, 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 a high high level uh, speculator. He is a person who in the 1990s uh, killed murdered the um, the British pound and made made a lot of uh, money out of it. At the same time, he is a he is a theoretical thing. He has a very bright, he's a, you know, bit in the family of those Warren Buffetts in, in the United States, a person who has a very clear view of how the, um, markets actually uh, op operate. And um, you may know also that um, uh, after 1989, after the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall, he gave a, a lot of money to, uh, uh, to uh, start, restart the uh, university system in the uh, United States. In the, excuse me, in the, um, in the East, East, East Europe. Um, so what, what says uh, Adair, Adair Turner in, the, in that, uh, describing the, how, how the system works? <coughs> and, and essentially his paper is about why things have stopped, have stopped uh, working. But there is also a strong belief 
which I share, that bad economics, or rather oversimplistic and overconfident economics, as I said, instead of saying incorrect, he says oversimplistic and overconfident economics helped create the crisis. There was a dominant conventional wisdom that markets were always rational and self-equilibrating, that market completion by itself could ensure economic efficiency and stability, and that financial innovation and increased trading activity were therefore axiomatically uh, beneficial. And then he goes in a bit into the details, and he says, as a result of that representation of how things will work, a set of policy prescriptions appear to follow. Macroeconomic policy, fiscal and monetary, was best left to simple, constant, and clearly communicated rules with no role for discretionary stabilization. Deregulation was in general beneficial because it completed more markets and created better incentives. Financial innovation was beneficial because it completed more markets, and speculative trading was beneficial because, the mention here of speculation, and speculative trading was beneficial because it, it ensured efficient price discovery of setting any temporary di divergences from rational equilibrium values. And finally, and complex and active financial markets and increased financial intensity not only improved efficiency, but also system stability, since rationally self-interested agents would disperse risk into the hands of those best placed to absorb and manage it. On that last uh, mentioned point, that rationally self-interested agents would disperse risk into the hands of those best placed to absorb and manage it. I've already um, mentioned that very briefly in, in passing. Uh, it, th that view was very common uh, at the time of when securitization, sec securitization was introduced. And I remind you what securitization means. It means that if you take some debt acknowledgement of, of debt, it's called IOU, I owe you some money, and usually it's represented by IOU, the, the, the letters. If you put, you could, you could actually put a large number of those together into, into um, in, in, in uh, ways of emulating, of replicating uh, what looked like a typical bond or, or ob ob obligation. And the view was that precisely that if you then sold parts of that to the public, the public would buy it in little pieces and that the risk that any of that money was not being refunded, typically because the homeowners who had borrowed the money would not be able to repay it, the risk would actually be spread out in the, in the population. That's exactly what was being said. And this was therefore, it was an assumption which is linked to the dominant economic model. Now, in reality, why there was there a, a subprime crisis within the banking system, it was because that distribution, that dispersing, uh, dispersion of risk never took, took place. Why didn't it take place? Because it was essentially banks who actually bought these, these products. Why? Because they had very high uh, rates association to, to it. Um, the coupon, as they called, the, very, the rate was high because the, the people or who were borrowing the money was regarded, were regarded as risky in terms of precisely repayment. And therefore, the premium, uh, the risk premium within that uh, coupon was, was actually high. These uh, obligations, these securities were uh, notated, uh, had very high notation from, um, uh, from the um, rating agencies, and therefore they were regarded with very little risk. And uh, they had these two characters, high coupon, low risk, which made the products extremely attractive, not to the public who never heard about them, but to the financial institutions themselves. And they bought the, these, these products. So that view that the system automatically produces dispersion with, which do, would dilute risk was actually shown not to be the uh, case um, in this particular respect. There was, in reverse, there was very high uh, concentration. <clears throat> On the, on, the, on the penultimate point I, I mentioned, the one about speculative, the speculative trading was beneficial because it, it ensured efficient price discovery. That means that 
the assumption from economic theory, from mainstream economic theory, that speculation cannot be bad because it ensures that the uh, price will be set at the right uh, level. And the more people there are, uh, the best it will be. And speculators will be just adding volume, being more people being there. What is actually observed is that speculative price, it, people know it because a simple phrase, when you say the price is speculative, everybody knows it means it's the wrong price. I mean, that's, that's part of common parlance, it's part of everyday language. But otherwise, you wouldn't call it a speculative price. So I would say the man in the street knows that the speculative price is not the correct price. But, but uh, mainstream uh, economic theory assumes just the, the, the reverse. Uh, studies have been made to see if speculative prices are correct. And the fact is that they, they are not. I mean, all the empirical studies have shown, have confirmed what is the, I would say, the layperson view that they are not correct. They go all over the place. Why? Because a speculator has interest to develop a trend, is trying to sell higher than he's bought, and will therefore, therefore do uh, whatever they, they can uh, in order to, um, to uh, in, in, in ensure that. Um, I mentioned a product called um, Credit Default Swap, and um, in another of his paper, um, Ada Turner mentions the fact that empirical studies on a credit default swap, on the premium, the risk premium that is part of the, the, these, these, these prices, has been consistently shown to be to be wrong, to be and at the opposite range of what it should be, to be too high when it should be at one, in some circumstances and be too low. Therefore, that that underlying principle which is there in the literature uh, to uh, that speculative prices ensure that the price is correct has actually been totally empirically disconfirmed by any investigation and as I said, even by the common feeling of anybody who doesn't know about, about, uh, about the economy or economic theory. And this is the difficulty uh, we have We have very much, and that was, I would say, that led to the, to, to the crisis in, in, in my view, that the representation of the economic process in, by 2006, 2007, true economic theory had, had been totally di disconnected by then from the, um, uh, from the um, uh, being a proper description of how, how things operate. The ideological uh, dimension of, 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 of that thinking uh, had, um, uh, had led it to depart more and more from, from, from reality. And as I said, I mean, I've, I've seen in, uh, in, in these people I read recently from Adair Turner, uh, criticism, which is, I would say, a more, a more, um, uh, more forcefully uh, expressed uh, by, by him than, than uh, in some of my writings on the, uh, on the same subject. Uh, I will go more into details of what actually that system uh, uh, does when I'll be talking uh, specifically of these, uh, about these socially useful and, and uh, uh, socially not useful uh, or even obnoxious uh, activities of the uh, financial sector when I'll be talking specifically, uh, I think it's next week, about, about Ada Turner. But as I said, this time I will reserve some time for, uh, for questions and um, it, it's, it's, it's time now that we, we, we turn to, to, to those. It would be nice to me if everything had been so transparent and I might be saying that there's no, no question at all, but. <clears throat> yes? Uh, I am reading at the time a book by uh, Andy Robert mm -hmm. about uh, PS3. Mm -hmm. Right. All those, uh, well, they are not so numerous, uh, clearing institutions mm -hmm. based in the Luxembourg and Brussels. Yeah. And uh, so I was wondering if you had uh, read that book. And if, well, he, he, he's a journalist, so he, uh, he, he gets some information uh, 
from these inquiries and his uh, thesis is that it's perfectly possible because everything is written and uh, it is perfectly possible to follow each operation mm -hmm. and uh, also he denounces the network uh, uh, which is hidden and, uh, yes. which links uh, well, uh, famous banks and also uh, uh, hidden uh, cartels of drugs in Colombia, for example. Right. And also uh, industries like Siemens in Germany. Mm -hmm. And all those institutions have the possibility to uh, exchange uh, funds and money. Everything is written and in books. And uh, apparently nobody has really the possibility or the courage to have a look into these books. And last thing, he says that that hidden industry developed in the, in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this book is for me uh, something incredible uh, in terms yes. of information. What is your point of view? On, on right. <clears throat> well, it needs to be said that Denis Robert, therefore, is a French journalist. He wrote um, a book. Um, in collaboration with a person who had been a um, employee of that um, Clearstream uh, uh, clearing house in an earlier stage when it had a different uh, name uh, before it, it, it became in its current current form. And so as I said, uh, these uh, clearing houses, they centralize information about streams of, of monies uh, which are being exchanged between countries, between uh, and entities and so on. The, um, the view about from the comp by the company is that it's actually dealing with accounts which most of the time are unlabeled, so there is no a name being attached. But they, they have guarantees that it's essential. It, it is not essentially that it's, it is only finan proper institution, financial institutions who are. Um, who are dealing with, who are transmitting that information. That collaborator, uh, a former um, a team member from these, that, that company, I think his name is Bacchus or something like, like, like this, close, close to that, uh, he claimed that it was not the case, that some individuals were actually uh, had accounts, uh, that some entities which were linked to um, uh, drug dealing, uh, weapon uh, trafficking, uh, were involved. And there was one particular case, I think, of a, uh, um, I, th I think it was called Men Menatep. Menatep was actually a, um, a, a, a Russian firm that seemed to have been linked essentially to the Russian uh, mafia who had, who had uh, accounts. So what um, Denis Robert, with that other man, wrote that, that book and they were sued, they were sued by, 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 by Clearstream. Um, and they lost initially the, uh, uh, the, the trial. Uh, the books were prevented from being uh, re released. Um, recently, the, um, the whole process has been, uh, um, has been reversed. Uh, and in the end, Robert has uh, managed to uh, have his uh, rights recognized and his books are, are, are released, released again. Uh, <clears throat> what, what happened in particular is that some things emerged from, from that. In particular, the, uh, um, the, I, I hinted to that, the, f the fact that uh, money to release uh, hostages in Iran had gone through one of those accounts. And this is, I would say, underlines why why situations like that are, are being tolerated? Because they are used for things that states do not want to tell the public that they, they do, like for a diplomatic reason, you say, well, we're going to be firm to that country because hostages should not be taken and in, uh, in, in, in backstage you're actually paying money for having the, uh, the uh, hostages released. And that's what, why it explains, I think, why these things are tolerated in, in that way. Um, Denis Robert felt victim of a manipulation and that, that uh, something, some information was leaked to him which was actually uh, not genuine. Uh, there was a conflict between Monsieur Sarkozy and Monsieur um, de Villepin in, in France and apparently um, some information was planted uh, where one of these hidden accounts was supposedly um, w uh, belonging to Monsieur to Monsieur uh, Sarkozy, and that was obviously 
some rivalry between different different uh, services within the, the French government that were either aligned on Monsieur de Villepin or Monsieur, on Monsieur Arcosi were fighting a dirty war there, there in, in the background. And that's probably what weakened the whole case of Denis Robert is that he was used then at the time he was um, releasing some some information. Just to, uh, it's an association, but it's it's probably not. Uh, and an, 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 what I say. The analogy is probably interesting too. Uh, it might be the case sometimes for people to try to diffuse, communicate, falsified information in order to discredit a party to, um, uh, to, um, who's part of a debate and may be in a position to win to some extent the debate, then some information is planted which is, which is false in order to discredit the whole, the whole discussion. And, um, I will not. I will not tell you what 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 I have in mind. But it's linked to the to the uh, uh, the, the, the operations of the blog that I have about economic uh, economic information. Uh, at, at some point, we had the feeling that somebody who had come for large time, um, an important length of time, was proper information was actually then starting to uh, put. Uh, uh, falsified information deliberately in order to uh, discredit, discredit the whole discussion had been uh, uh, taking place. But the example, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good, it, it was very relevant for you to mention that uh, case of, uh, of a clear stream because it is, it raises all these issues I've been mentioning today in the, uh, in, in the lecture. Anybody else? You have a question? Yes. His commissions, because the commissions are really high, all they do is you know, administrative work. And um, he said to me that if you start paying um, bankers not such high wages, um, they stop doing their work really well, and you can't really trust your financial services to, to a person you can't trust. What would you retort to that? Well, I mean, anybody who's paid a high wage is, has got some good explanation why it shouldn't, shouldn't be different, right? Um, the, the argument, uh, an argument has been ab about the high bonuses, not only in, in the, the financial in industry, but in the uh, industry at, at large, have been justified, as you know, that we need to uh, reward competence. Um, this, this argument, as, as, as we've seen, which could be, be true, um, has been undermined, I would say, quite often in case of the financial industry by very blatant cases where the person who had been receiving these very high bonuses were shown to have had no uh, understanding of the situation at all, had made all the wrong, uh, the wrong de uh, decisions and, and so, so on. The, uh, the difficulty there, I would say, is linked to that issue I mentioned during the, the lecture is that most of these wrong decisions that have been made, let's say in the years 2006, 2007, 2008, all these wrong decisions had the, uh, the uh, how would I say, were supported by the opinion of, uh, of uh, Nobel Prizes in, in economy. That's, so that underlines that that whole construct was, was valueless. But at the same time, people can say that they were in good faith because what else could they refer to as being the authority for the opinion they had, the decisions they were making, than the opinion of a Nobel Prize? So I would say that that shows the failure of the system altogether. It's not a failure of individual. It's the failure of the whole system but to have has been actually unable at the time everybody was assuming that a proper body of knowledge was being built that it, it was not it was a how would I say a totally collective del delusion and um, if you read the, the I would think you know these autobiographies of some some of these uh, uh, of these uh, t uh, people ahead of industry I think in particular I mean Jack Welch uh, at, the, at the head of uh, General Electric is not a financial institution although it had GMAC they had it had its own proper uh, bank associated um, 
you can see all these people, you know, explaining how they were right because they were doing things, you know, entirely according to the book. They were doing the things exactly as Mr. as Mr. von Hayek had said you should do it, exactly as Mr. Friedman said you should do it. The, the fact that. As uh, Adair Turner underlines, I mean the whole th the whole house of cards collapsed in 2008. But at the same time, you can't take any of these people and they would say, well, you know, I mean, uh, this is what Nobel Prizes were saying. But I knew it was wrong, and I would and, and I was doing just the exact reverse. None of them had has, has done that. It's only recently that. That you, you see that, that inaugural conference of the Institute of New Economic Thinking. It's uh, Cambridge, April 2010. It's very, very recent that there's an awareness that that whole construction was 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 was, uh, was false, mistaken, and that you couldn't really uh, re rely on it. Um, the issue of the high compensation, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that here in this context or in, or in another context recently, but that when I, I think it was in the course in the course of lectures here that when I attended some of these discussions within American companies of how much the uh, top, uh, the top uh, executives would be, would be paid, that the reference was to the, the sport and the entertainment world. Yeah. And people said, you know, we are business people who are so good in what we're doing. There's no, no reason why we would pay, pay less than Madonna or, or uh, what's his name, Jordan? Um, what's the, uh, I forget his first, uh, first. Michael Jordan, etc. So that, that was, I mean, it was not competence. It was that we are people who cannot possibly be paid less than these people in the entertainment and the sport, sport industry. Uh, but that will not be said officially. That was part of the discussion as you were uh, attending them. But the justification was said it was in, in terms of competence. If you don't pay that, that man uh, that much, he will go to another company. And it was right because the other company would be, have the exact same uh, reasoning. The people would part of these compensation board, as they as they are called, uh, they would all um, you know be part of, of several of these boards, and they would go with the same arguments within within companies. And of course, there would be a how would I say? Outbidding, you say, well, you know that now the Apple got the Apple the ad, heads of Apple get so much. How could we at Google let, get less than, than than Apple? You know, typically it would be like that. So, sur uh, I don't remember the word in um, yeah, outbidding in in in, in English, uh, in terms of this, the, the sky the sky is the limit, and it would be for the shareholders to uh, to come in and say, well, we we don't want that to hap happen that, that way. But at the same time, the compensation of the of the um, compensation of the executives would be regarded as objective information about the quality of the company, so it will be a, a vicious, vicious circle uh, altogether. Any other question? All right. Well, in, 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 as I said in the coming lecture, we'll go, go more into that um, notion about socially useful and, and, and not socially uh, useful uh, financial activities, which will allow me to go a bit deeper into that uh, um, issue of the, sh the shadow banking system, when, in w which I only uh, scratch the surface uh, uh, today. Thank you.